Hey everyone, welcome to Hope for Our Times for Monday. Uh, things might look a little bit different because I am here in Israel at the Golan Heights at Mount Bental with Air Sasson. Uh, so you're going to see things will be a little bit different today, but this is exciting for me. Uh, one of the challenges is bringing something to you live. So we ran into a few balagons, so uh, we're unable to do that today. But we have this, and we're going to be talking about what's going on in Israel now, uh, what's gone on in the past. Uh, and, and, you know, this is the place when I come up here, I think of what's coming in the future also. I think of the Ezekiel 38 battle that the Bible describes uh, coming from the north uh, with Gog and Magog, that invasion, Turkey, Iran, Russia, and so forth. But we're going to talk about some things a little bit different today, and I'm pretty sure that you are going to be absolutely blessed by this so Eris, uh, I'm thinking for you guys watching this, you've never met Eris Sasson before. Uh, you've met David Tal before. David was with us the first part of this trip. And Eris has been with us for the last couple of days and through the rest of them. So we have a lot that are coming up and you're going to be absolutely blessed. But for right now, uh, this is your treat for the week. Eris, you get to say hi to everybody. Shalom, everyone. I'm so glad to be here. Okay, you're, you're, you're going to find out how blessed you're going to be. Okay, so Ayers, we're standing here, Mount Bental. That's where you have that, I call it the famous sign, where you have the, the <laughs> sign with the white uh, arrows that are pointing Damascus, All Jerusalem, over. and so forth. Uh, so let's connect some dots. Um, let's start off here. Okay. We think of the road to Damascus. In the road to Damascus, we think of the Bible, the road to Damascus, the Apostle Paul, the road to Damascus, connecting with Jerusalem. Uh, in which would be in the south from here. We have the yes. Damascus Gate. And we look back here, and it's right out there. Yes, um, Pastor Tom. Israel is, in fact, a bridge between continents. It was so throughout history. To the north, Mesopotamia, the Fertile Crescent. Uh, if you have a view in, in the back, you could see how fertile and nice it is. To the south of Israel, we have Egypt, the Nile, fertile land, and right in the center, Israel. So Israel, throughout history, was a passageway from, for people from south to north, north to south. And from the main junction of the land of Israel, meaning the Jezreel Valley, also known as the Valley of Armageddon, that's where people would decide to, to, uh, to choose their passageway either to the south or mostly to the north all the way to Damascus that was quite a point to reach. You had a few roads that would lead to Damascus. In the land of Israel, the road was known as the Via Mars, the way of the sea. And from the lower point, from the center of Israel, heading all the way to the northeastern side, and from here reaching Damascus, or from the Jordanian side, from the mountains, from the Golan Heights, from uh, before that Oman and Moab upon the mountains, eventually reaching Damascus. And Damascus is not too far away from here. I mean, we're at the northern border of Israel. From here to Damascus, if I'm talking in miles, it's about 37, 38 miles in a flat land. So, I mean, you open up your scriptures and you read from it. You read about the journey of Shaul known as Paul, that wanted to head to Damascus and then the Lord Yeshua revealed himself to it. I mean, if I'm using my imagination, I could see it with my eyes. Uh, this, is, this is so neat being up here. One of my favorite places, also we have the, the famous uh, the cafe up here. Uh, uh, and when I think of it and I think of what God's done and God's protection over the years, we're driving up here. You have the cows out there. And just the other day, I was reading about the cows of Bashan. Yes. And here we see cows out there and, you, and the cows of Bashan. And I think, you know, those Old Testament prophecies regarding those things. And you look now at where we are and Israel was removed from the land, scattered to the four corners of the earth. But God says, I will gather you back into the land. And the this place right where we're standing speaks of the protection from God over the history of the nation of Israel, the history of the world. How God has protected them. He's gathered them back into the land, given them, given Israel the high ground. I think of something like I, I saw a series on Netflix with Ellie Cohen. It's just a remarkable uh, story 
a real life story. And there's many other things that God did to miraculously protect Israel through people, but also through some of the the things that you could say people weren't even involved in this, and yet God did these marvelous things. I have to say, Pastor Tom, that uh, a lot has changed, but not much has changed. I mean, when you come here to the land and you tour all around, you understand it, you get it. The Golan Heights itself, the eastern border of Israel is the high grounds. Before 1967, before we took control over the Golan Heights, uh, our farmers down in the valley area to the west from here, farmers, uh, people living in the kibbutz all around, they were, uh, uh, they were open to attacks from the Syrian soldier. They were uh, sitting ducks there. They had to escape from the soldiers shooting at them behind trees and walls. That, of course, changed after the Six-Day War, and now the heights are ours. No more, uh, no more uh, advantage to the Syrians, but we're on the same level, more or less. You talked about uh, the, the, the cow, the bulls of the Bashan that we read about in Scripture. Coming here, uh, you really understand the meaning of it, because the Golan Heights is a fertile area at the northern side, and at the southern side, as we came up here, we saw uh, many stones, many uh, military bases, and we saw cows. This area in the, south, in the middle, um, the, the central part of the Golan Heights, is less fertile. So what did the people in ancient times use it for? For raising cattle. What are we doing today? Raising cattle, exactly at the same spot. So coming here, allows you to understand scriptures much, much better, that's for sure. The eastern border of Israel, as well as the, the rest of our borders, have to be protected. We're surrounded by countries that, from the beginning, did not want us here, yeah? Um, and uh, we have means of protections all around. Today we have, of course, technology. We have uh, uh, very advanced technology that we created here in the land of Israel. If it's the Iron Dome or the Chetz 3, the Arrow, or the David Sling, or the American Patriot that, are, that is in use, we have layers and layers of protection all around us. Hopefully in the next year, year and a half, uh, our technology that is based on lasers will be active and that will help us even more so protect ourselves for a time of need. But you know, Pastor, above all, we have the God, the Lord, the Lord at our side. And throughout history, modern history, as well as scriptures, of course, that is obvious for us, but it's important to put our point, our finger on it right now. Throughout our modern history, the Lord was always on our side. I mean, if you think from the beginning, from uh, the Jews uh, entering the land in the middle end of the 19th century, little by little coming here and building small communities, different security groups that had their own leaders that didn't see eye to eye. And all of a sudden, boom, the War of Independence. We're talking about people that just barely made it here in the land. We are talking about people that were survivors of Holocaust that came here and all of a sudden, countries all around us want us gone and we didn't even have it, uh, an army or, or, or one leader to lead us in this battle. We had different security groups that at one given point had to unite under one leadership and push back the threats around us. I think the greatest miracle is the War of Independence. You know, if you want to connect it to scriptures, um, the number of Israelis, the Jews, that were here in the land, that entered the land and managed uh, to survive here in the time of our independence was 600,000. That's the number. Remember the number that the book gives us in the time of the Exodus? 600,000 men. The number in the time of the Exodus, 3,300 years ago, to the number of Jews from our modern time entering the land, our independence, is the same number. 19, Six, take it back to 1948. 19, 1948, 600,000.
That's it, remarkable. Exactly as back then in the day. So that's only the War of Independence. If we jump to the Six Day War, uh, in six days we managed to defeat ten armies. I mean, that doesn't happen. We, we see today Russia against Ukraine. I, I'm not comparing, but for the last 60 days, the Russians are bombing them, and Russia is considered to be one of the strongest countries in the world, and yet nothing much is moving there, right? I mean, they're killing people, a lot of innocents, but not much more than that. Here in six days, managed to defeat 10 armies surrounding it? That doesn't happen. And the miracle that happened here, units, uh, all of this Golan height, all of these heights were in the hands of the Syrians. So we had to parachute our soldiers here. And some of them uh, were parachuted into minefields, could not take another move, another step. And they would pray to God. And all of a sudden, wind came and revealed the landmine so they could walk out of there. In the Yom Kippur War, um, uh, enemies uh, fr from, from the east, the Syrians, managed to break the strongholds. And when I talk about the strongholds, I talk about these ancient volcanoes that were standing on that give us extra height. If they break through these strongholds, they're free to continue all the way to the settled Jewish areas. And some of them did manage to break through it, but they got calls from Syria saying, uh, General, that it's a trap, an Israeli trap. They must stop. There was no trap. Yeah, the Lord confused them to give that order there. And then what happened? They stopped. Enough time for Israeli forces to come and push them back here. Miracles after miracles. Syrian soldiers and tanks shot at one another. Confusion, just like we read in scriptures time after time again. Uh, and obviously, I mean, the Lord was on our side sending uh, um, spies before the Six-Day War, Eli Cohen, to Syria under a, a made-up story and he managed to get closer and closer uh, to the authorities over there and give them all kinds of ideas that were later on will help us, like the story of planting the trees by the mili their military bases to give them shade uh, in the summertime so uh, the soldiers would be cooler. But that just marked the, the military points in Syria. In the time of the war, Israel knew exactly where to shoot, uh, to attack, to, to hit the targets. I mean, you read about these uh, different mirrors, you know, even in our time. Why am I going so far away? Uh, in the time of the, the battle in Syria, Israel, this is something that has not been uh, told much to the press around the world. Israel built military um, uh, field hospitals all around the border to help uh, the Syrians, though they got it. We never asked them, where are you from? We just wanted to help. And uh, uh, a lot of times the Israeli soldiers opened up uh, uh, the gate to go to the other side to allow them in. And there's uh, uh, some sort of filming, I, I think, in YouTube that ISIS or Al-Qaeda, I'm not sure, um, they, they, they wanted to surprise our soldiers and shoot them. And they, they film and they see our soldiers coming, I mean, we're right on the border between Israel and Syria, coming out of the fence to, to check out that area. And they're aiming at our soldiers. They're, they're going to hit them in seconds. And all of a sudden, um, wind comes with dust and covers our soldiers. And then when, they, when the, the terrorists could see once again, our soldiers are already back in the territory of Israel and the gate is closed. So, so many miracles are happening since the, our modern state of Israel. And even before that, that, that it's obvious that the hand of the Lord is surrounding us and protecting us. I, I love this. Everything you were talking about reminds me of Israel's beginning. You go back to David and Goliath. You, you look at the time of Gideon and the way that God miraculously did things, but that's been the story of Israel since its beginning. A small nation, a small people, yet many enemies, giant enemies, and yet God, I believe, God wants to get the glory in all of this, and that's why we see these amazing things. Oh, no. A couple of other things I just want to update everybody on. Many of you are probably wondering when we film this, probably about, what do you guys say, about 10 hours before to uh, it posted so there's not much time there it was light here and we were able to do this so this is fresh material that you're getting um and then i, I think of something else here 
uh, as we're standing here airs, and a lot of people in the Western world are hearing about the threats from Hamas right now, but we've been here and we've, I've traveled all over. I went with David down to the Gaza area and we've been up north, we've been down south. Um, we're going to Jerusalem, the Jerusalem tomorrow. Um, and we, we've been in the Galilee today. And as, as it has always been, every time I come to Israel, there's this peace that's here that you can't explain. And I try to tell people when you hear of one, you'll hear of one person that gets killed in Israel. You'll hear of one. It'll be all over the world news. And yet I look at Los Angeles, you look at Chicago, you look at New York. There's so many people that are killed there every day and it doesn't make news. And, and uh, you know, I say this because God's hand is here. This is his land. He's continuing. It, it amazes me the building I've seen that's still going on. Here it is, we've been, it's been two years since I've been here. And to see the building and how all the restrictions, by the way, have all been lifted in Israel, just so you guys know. Um, uh, nobody's even wearing masks anywhere. I see them more back home in California than I do here. But I mean, it's just really neat to stand here in this place again and see what God's, what God's doing and to be able to have this time with you. Uh, what, what a real blessing. Thank do, you. Do you have any final? Oh, I know. I have one more question for you because I know the people who watch this. They're going to wonder. You're here. You're Israeli. You're Jewish. And this is the question they're wondering. I already know the answer to it, but they're wondering. Uh, they're probably already typing right there in the comments. <laughs> you guys know. Uh, is, is he, uh, does he believe in Yeshua? And that's what they're wondering. So, <laughs> yeah, I'm a believer in Yeshua. Um, Yeshua uh, performed the miracle, I haven't told you this, uh, in my family when my second child, Nathaniel, was born. He was born with a, a kidney situation. In the beginning of the doctors talked about abortion and all of that. I couldn't hear of it, of course. And uh, his situation was bad. They talked about a baby doing uh, an operation, taking out the kidney. And we were in a bad situation. I'm talking about 2011, March 2011. At that time, I didn't believe in anything. I have to tell you the truth, Pastor Tom. Before that, before the army, I was an observing Jew that put the phylacteries on every morning, really going to the synagogue. Kind of reminds me of uh, characters in scriptures, yeah. right? And uh, joining the army, it all changed. Later on in time, uh, the Lord uh, healed my son after good Christians from around the world uh, came here to the land and took me under their wings and pushed me, I could say even, to pray with them. And that opened up my eyes and heart. And I was skeptic in the beginning. Truth must be told. But then I saw how uh, time after time again, we went to the doctor for my child's checkup every three weeks in the beginning, how the situation changed until the doctor said not in three more weeks, but three more months until on the 16th of November, 2013 and 11, my son was fully healed and the doctor said, I don't want you here anymore. Since then, I knew uh, what the Lord has done in my life. He tried to speak with me beforehand. I, uh, I was blind. I, I pushed him away. I admit it. Um, but after he used the strongest tool of them all, my son, to open up my eyes, I, understand, I understood who the Lord was. I understood, you know, more than that, what my mission was. He put me in this, in, in this uh, uh, land. Before that, I was a kindergarten teacher. Before that, I was a computer programmer. I didn't find myself because the Lord wanted me to be here in the center of the world, in the land of Israel, and to connect to Christians. And after that, he turned me into a believer so I could spread the world and the new information and the new finding and the new sights and the new miracles that are happening here in the land almost every day. And then to spread the news to the people all over the world. So yes, I'm a believer. Um, it's hard for a Jew to become a believer. You know, through all the wrong that has happened throughout history, being blamed for being Christ killers and the church not helping in the time of the Holocaust and, and so on and so on. And, you talk to Jews uh, today about Yeshua, some of them will push you away. Some of them will say, yes, thank you, but I'm Jewish. 
but the Lord is speaking directly to the people through miracles and they're opening, he's opening up their eyes and I'm one of them. Amen. I love that. That's fantastic. The, the, listen, this has just been great time with you, Ares. I've had a great time so far. I know we have a lot more that's coming up. And I, and I think of this, and I want to say to everybody watching, is while we're in Israel, pray for us. Uh, we're going to be, I'll be back at my home church by Sunday. I'm looking forward to seeing everybody back there again. We have some more updates we're going to send you from here. Uh, on Tuesday, you're going to see a different message from Billy Crone. He did a uh, message you're going to love. You haven't seen it yet. Had one on Sunday night. You guys saw one, a different one's coming Tuesday. Um, I'll be back doing another update with our team and with Eras. And then uh, also uh, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Ultimately, that means for Yeshua to come back. But in this, we meet a lot of different people in the land, uh, both Jew and Muslim, and help us to have a good testimony. Uh, that many more people would just come to know the Lord. Uh, until next week, listen, God bless you guys, or until next time, I should say, which will probably only be a couple days away. God bless you guys. Shalom. Shalom.